Well, hi there. I'm going to show you how to do my oyster pearl stitch. Now this is a stitch video, so there's no project. It's just to show you the stitch, but I am going to give you tips so that you'll be able to do a project if you want. Okay, so um, I'll give you all the tips, but it's not a project video. Okay. Um, I'll also link to the cast on in the description. So when you look at the description, scroll down and you'll see the cast on I used. Okay, so you'll even be able to cast on and there'll be a cast off that matches it there too. But you'll have to scroll down to see it. Now the yarn I'm using, this is a bulky yarn. It is King Cole Riot Chunky. It is a combination, all oh, the color is candy floss. And it is um, a combination of 30% wool and 70% acrylic. And it has a kind of a slight sheen to it. It's really pretty. If I had to compare it to a yarn, if you've ever used landscape yarn, it kind of is shiny like that and it shows a stitch like that, but it's a stronger yarn. It binds off without kind of shredding um, like landscape can do. And it's a stronger yarn. So it's the one I've used to replace that. And I really, really like it. Okay. Um, the thickness of it would be pretty close to something like Premier Puzzle Yarn or Barcelona. It's not a really thick chunky. It's a thinner chunky. Okay. And that's why I'm on a 5 8 inch gauge to do this instead of a three quarter although on the three quarter the stitch would still come out good but that's the yarn i'm using and you can also use a fine fine yarn with a thin gauge loom the stitch looks good with that too okay now this is my loom hook i got it from a company called we have a handle on this and i don't believe they um have made them for quite some time now but uh, she did tell me they were thinking of making them again, but they do have similar ones on Etsy. So you can find a loom hook, this shape on Etsy. This one is wood though. It's a painted wood. Okay. And uh, the loom is a 5 8 inch loom, Cindy wood loom. 36 pegs. Okay. I'm only using 10 of the pegs, but... This is a perfect pattern for a blanket. So you can make it really large, make it into a blanket, make it into a shawl, make it into a scarf. It has a lot of texture and in the round it looks pretty close to the same so you can match it. Okay, pretty close. And We'll take a close look and you'll see why I called it Oyster Pearl. Can you see those oysters in there? Look, you can see that the, the pearls inside the oyster. That's what it reminded me of. Beautiful, beautiful texture. Really easy stitch to do and it doesn't curl. It does have pearls though. So it's not one of my no pearl stitches. Oh, it really, really looks pretty cool. The other direction of it looks like this. It looks, it has a great look to it too. There we go, get it in the camera. And here is the, the nicer part of it too. Look at the flip side. The flip side has a really awesome pattern too. So, I mean, you could decide to use the flip side or make it reversible. And it reverses to this, or this can be your front side even. But look at that. Really, really awesome look to it. And it doesn't curl. The only treatment I did with the ed edges was slip the stitch. So, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so I think that's everything you need to know. Um, I'm having trouble with this cord here. Okay, so let's just get started. 
Okay. So it's two rows. This row, and I've just slipped the side, this row is going to be my magic twist stitch. Very easy, easy stitch. You go over in a U-wrap. And I'm going to get just a little bit closer here for you while I do this. While I show you the first few stitches, that might be a little bit too close. We don't want to get too blurry getting too close, but how about that? Okay, so we go over in a U-wrap and we just knit it off. Then we come from behind, go in front and do a U-wrap again. Knit it off. We go in front and do a U-wrap again and knit it off. And that's all there is to it. And you wrap, knit it off. Come around, you wrap, knit it off. Come around, you wrap, knit it off. Okay, so you wrap, coming in from behind and in front, knitting it off. And then again, <laughs> I lost my place. Sorry about that. I was looking at uh, where we were on the camera and then I didn't remember how many stitches I put on there. <laughs> so trying to pay attention to too many things at the same time, kind of like trying to rub your belly and scratch your head and whatever else. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I hope it's in the camera because now I'm trying to pay attention to my stitches. So I'm just going to move out a little bit. There we go. Because it's a little clear right here. We're going to knit it over, come around from the back, knit it over, come around from the back, and knit it over again. So a very, very easy, easy stitch. You don't have to be real tight with it. It's not a loose stitch um, with the stitch we use after it. And the best part too is like you're putting three stitches on here so the work is growing really really fast. So this will be a really really fast project to knit. And when you show people, they'll go, whoa, that must have taken you forever. Look at how complex that is. But it's not. It's easy and fast. <laughs> okay, so we come to the last one here. And you're just going to e-wrap it. And that's it. Slip it. And uh, people are going to say, you're actually slipping a stitch. You never slip a stitch. Well, when I do purls, a project where I'm doing a row of purls, I do slip a stitch. Because purl gives you a bumpy edge on the side. So you're e I'd either do a garter stitch edge or I slip it. But when I do owl eye, of course, I do the, the edge I do because that one looks really nice and tight and good on owl eye. And owl eye isn't bumpy like that. So I do slip it when I use purl. It just makes sense because with this stitch, if you didn't slip the sides and you're doing this magic twist, you'd have a really weird looking thing there. So slipping, it's the best for this. Or you could do a big garter stitch edge. That would work too. You can do any edge you want, really. And I forgot to tell you how I cast on, which I said I would do. So I cast on with that crochet chain cast on. And it just looks like this. It's a really nice look. I have the link, as I said, on it. You just go to the description and scroll down. And I also have a link to the matching bind off so you can match this. Okay. And the edges look exactly the same as this end because they're slipped. Okay. So that's what they look like. Pretty bright, isn't it, with this bright yellow? Okay, so there you go. Oh, and then after I cast on, I did two rows of owl eye. So when I cast off, I'll do another two rows of owl eye before I cast off. That just was just to give it a nice base for the cast on to lay straight. And always do two rows of owl eye because if you do one, 
you could still curl. It takes two rows to balance the stitch. Okay. All right. Now the second row. Here's row two. Easy stitch. You probably already know. Um, not easy for all of you, but I did warn you there are pearls in it. So some of you could just go, oh, don't want that stitch <laughs> if you don't like pearls. Okay. We purl. Row two is purl. So we just purl it. And you should know how to purl. I, this shouldn't be your first project with purl, but if it is, you take the working yarn and, and put it down. You take this and put it through just like the cast on that, that you're going to do if you've looked at my channel, but you put the loom hook through there. You scoop up the yarn to make another loop. So you got a loop here and then you lift this off and put the loop back on. You slip it on over and you have a purl. Okay, so hook in, scoop up the yarn, replace it with the loop. Okay, hook down, scoop up the yarn. Okay, I'll do it with my left hand so you can maybe see it better. Go over and just replace it. Okay. All there is to a pearl. Uh, people, some people have different methods. This is just the way I do it. You still have to make the same loop and put it over the peg, but some people move it over with their loom hook and all kinds of things. I just do this. And the last pearl. There we go. And then how you slip this edge is just another e-wrap and knit it over. And then you go right into the magic twist stitch for row one. Three of these. Three of these again. I really think this is probably all you need to be able to do this project. But let's take a look. We only did the one row of the magic twist and one row of the pearl. Let's see how much bigger we got. And take a look at that. That's quite a bit bigger. Okay, so let's take another look at this. And if you used, let's say you used a thinner um, yarn and it was more lacy, it would look more like this. So I'm opening it up. You can see it would look more like this lacy. But with a bulky yarn, this is what you get. And if you were to have an even bulkier yarn, this would be even tighter. If you wanted a really tight stitch, this one will do it for you. Okay. And um, you'll always look good on this side too. Take another look at that because I just think that's fabulous how this side looks and look at the texture of it ton a ton of texture so i hope you have a lot of fun with this stitch it's not going to curl for you um, show the projects you do to people because this one is going to make it look like you worked really hard to do this stitch and it's pretty darn easy okay so until next time, bye.